Welcome to Major Keys. Thank you for tuning in. Today we have an interview with Selena Castillo. She is the creative director for the Duke women's basketball team and she is responsible for all the cool content you see on their social media pages and all of the branding during this hashtag Kara era. So can't wait for you to see that. But before we get to that, I want to highlight three boss moves that women have made in sports recently. The first being Sarah Fuller, who became yet another woman to score in collegiate football. Number two, Tara Vanderveer, legendary in our game. She broke the record of the late Pat Summit to become the all-time winningest coach in basketball. And number three, Kendall Coyne Schofield, who became the first woman to coach in the NHL Blackhawks organization. So congratulations to her and make sure you check out this video where she drops some gems and talks about why it is important for her to improve the game for girls. All right, congratulations to all three of those women. Now let's get into this interview with Selena. I'm welcoming in my guest, Selena Castillo, the creative director for the Duke women's basketball team. Thanks for joining me. How are you? Great. Um, how are you doing? I'm, I mean, there's the pandemic out there and some crazy things, you know, watching debates yeah. and things are lifting my blood pressure, but for the most part, Pretty, pretty well. I'm safe and happy. So all good. So I know you obviously you work in sports now, but you also grew up playing sports. So first challenge is you have 60 seconds to tell me your sports journey. So whatever you think that is Ooh, comprised of, but you only right. have 60 seconds. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Time's on the clock. Ready? Go. So I was very active as a young kid, um, you know, try to like kind of a tomboy, right? Always wanted to play any sport, you know, recess and PE were my favorite, right? Hours uh, in, in elementary school, middle school. And then um, in high school, I played five sports, um, track, cross country, volleyball, basketball, softball. Uh, and the one sport I wanted to play was soccer, but it was the same season as basketball in Florida. And that was my non-negotiable sport. You know, I played basketball no matter what. Um, and then ultimately I played basketball, um, at Emory in Atlanta, uh, and that's it. I mean, pretty short there. That's pretty much my sports journey. Like I said, pretty much always was playing any sport I could, uh, whatever it was in season. And I, now what I do now is run. I'm like a runner, okay. uh, more than anything these days. And I still will play pickup when I can, but obviously with the pandemic, it's hard to get in the gym uh, with other people these days. So not much pickup going on. Um, but that's my sports journey. I think that was uh, pretty short. I didn't actually have the clock going, but I think you were definitely under like 40 was... seconds, but that's good. <laughs> before researching you before today, which we've known each other for a couple of years now um, through the WBCA, but I didn't know that you played at Emory. So yeah. actually that means at some point, I imagine our paths cross because I'm from Georgia, but I took a visit okay, to Emory. Yeah. Okay. I think when I was like a junior in high school and we're only a year apart, well, maybe, maybe I was a senior. Oh, yeah. senior. So there's a chance that I either saw you play or saw you practice. So small yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> it could be. I want to say it rings a bell now. Like, oh, yeah, I think I did remember your name, but I don't know. I could be making that up. Well, but, small yeah. world, of course. Okay, so yeah. what did playing five sports or playing sports in general teach you uh, while you were growing up? Um, the biggest thing was teamwork. And that was actually why I chose to play basketball in college instead of run track or cross country. Although... Of course, there's a team element to track and cross country, but I just love the, the aspect of being on a team. I love the feeling of coming together, you know, on the court specifically, maybe getting a defensive stop, you know, coming up with like pass, pass, wide open layup type play. Uh, there was no better feeling than that at a young age for me, let alone as you get to the college ranks when it obviously competition is a little higher. Uh, so that's the biggest thing is, um, is it's bigger than the individual, you know, you can't win a game by yourself. Uh, so that was probably the biggest component of, of sports that I think has, has helped me um, working with a team, uh, obviously, you know, work with a team in my career now. Uh, so definitely that and um, time management, right? Hard work, work ethic, um, competition. I'm very competitive. And at times that definitely has gotten the best of me, right? But the good thing is for the most part, you can channel that always in sports. And that's, that's uh, huge for me. In fact, growing up, if you asked me what I wanted to do, I would have probably said co high school coach, middle school coach, because that was all I knew, right? In middle school, all I knew was middle school coach. And then I got to high school, like, oh, wait, high school is a cool level. Let me do high school. And I, in college, I kind of still felt that way, but then I, you know, kind of evolved in other ways. But uh, I just loved everything about teamwork and competition uh, when it comes to sports. 
you're responsible for a lot of the social media and the graphics that we see, which are very fly coming out of uh, the Duke women's basketball accounts. But give me a better idea of like what, like what you do. Like if you had to encapsulate what you do, right. um, share with that. Cause it's not, I wouldn't say it's very common on every set. Right. You know? So uh, tell us a little bit about what you do. Right. Yeah. So um, I started October, 2017. So about three years ago, actually three years ago, you know, to this month. And um, I do, I manage all of our social media, um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, and then I guess I, my kind of bread and butter when I came into this position was graphic design. Uh, and I've taught myself all of those skills, which is something I'm definitely proud of, but also it's like amazing. There's a lot of creative people who are self-taught, uh, especially this day and age. So anyone who's maybe interested in doing that, you know, you can do it. You can go on Google and learn a lot basically with a uh, Photoshop and those sorts of you know, applications and softwares. Um, but anyway, so manage all of our social media, uh, create any of the content you see. Um, we have a video department who, when it comes to game, game day type content, you know, helps with that. But otherwise, everything else, creative content uh, is all comes from me. I do motion graphics. And then I have about a year ago started using a camera. So I do do video content now. Um, it's been a lot of fun. There's times where it's like, very challenging, right? Because it's so unknown and it's like out of my comfort zone. Uh, but that's been a big component of, of my kind of growth, right? In this position recently is uh, the video work. So I think that's um, like pretty much everything. I mean, I always say I pretty much manage the visual brand, the digital brand, you know, anything that you see on a screen that has to do with our program. Um, I pretty much have a hand in or create it or, or whatever that the case might be, so. So I'm gonna guess you were the one shooting the video. Um, I saw it went viral of Kara Lawson um, yeah. talking to the players maybe last month or a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. How has that been? I know you grew up playing basketball, so I imagine Kara Lawson was probably on that list yes. of people that you saw yes. and watched. How has that been having her come into the into the program? Oh, amazing. I mean, like you said, her resume speaks for itself. You know, she's accomplished so much, definitely watched her playing for Pat Summit, uh, which is huge. And it's amazing because there's so many times I'll be talking to Kara and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can sense Pat. You know, you just yeah. feel it. And like you said, yes, as, as a young Hooper, I, I was, it was like Pat Summit, you know, and then everyone else, right? And, uh, and so I feel that and it really is amazing. And then, you know, I was a point guard, she was a point guard and there's kind of a level of understanding there as far as how you look at things and, and you have to be very proactive. You've got to really see ahead. And she's like one of the best, I've ever been around it at doing that. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, if I think I'm prepared, okay, no, she's prepared. Like she's, you know, 10 steps ahead. Uh, so yeah, that video that you referenced, it actually, again, over 3 million views right across all platforms, which is pretty okay. cool. Um, yeah, pretty, it was, we didn't think it's funny because we didn't think it was going to do, I literally was like, oh, I think 10,000, maybe 15,000 views. Like that was literally what we were kind of estimating as we were getting ready to get it out. And sure enough, it's like over 3 million and we're still getting, you know, letters, calls and messages about it um, to this day. Uh, but yeah, it, it's been very cool that I get to work so closely with someone, like you said, that I grew up watching play and, and uh, watching on TV with uh, ESPN. And of course, most recently, like coaching in the NBA, like, and now I'm like, wait, you were just like in the bubble and now yeah. you're like in my office and we're talking about Twitter, like what, you know what I mean? Um, so, so yeah, it's been awesome. And I'm very excited to see where this program goes under her leadership because she really is built for this, right? I mean, again, she's played for Pat Summit, uh, coached under, you know, Brad Stevens now with the Celtics and then has Coach K, you know, right above us. Right. And uh, not to mention there's many others that have influenced her journey and uh, many other great people, of course, that she attributes, right, some of her success to, but those three names alone, I mean, just give me one of those names, you know what I mean? And we have all, all three that I'm like, and then I get to kind of soak that in via her. So right. yes, I mean, I'm, I pinch myself every day, like this is what I get to do. It's, it's really amazing. Yeah, that's huge. Actually, one of my best friends, he I will say he's not really tapped into the women's sports side of it. And he sent me the video. First of all, I'm like, okay, oh, no. like relax. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've seen it, but you know, that it just kind of crossed that barrier. That was huge. So 3 million views, mm -hmm. big time. You know, you talked about Pat Selma, you talked about all these major influences. Who are those people for you when you were growing up that you did look to? 
Yeah, I mean, I kind of referenced my middle school PE teacher, uh, Coach Haskins, you know, and then my high school basketball coach, uh, Casey Higgins. Uh, those are two people that definitely have been huge influences still to this day. A uh, big thing with strong women in leadership. And even at this point, that would have been 13, 14 years ago that I was in middle school. Um, and even back then, you didn't see a lot of women in leadership positions. And we know that's a huge uh, kind of fight that we're still fighting for now in 2020. So back then it was even less. And and I think that was a huge thing was seeing females that I could like see myself in their shoes. Right. And they were just, you know, amazing, uh, like so strong, so confident. And I, I had no concept of like a male female uh, gap in sports. Right. Right. At that time, you know what I mean? Of course, yeah. And by the time you get to college and, and you start to see more, oh, wow, there is, we still have a long way to go. Right. But right. Um, yeah, they were just so strong at such a young age. So to be able to be around that um, definitely influenced me and, and showed me women, you know, belong in sports as much as anyone else. Um, of right. course, my mother, I got to shout out my mom. Uh, she's, very, she's a mother of six kids and a full time attorney. So she's taught me a lot about resilience and, 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 and work ethic. So I would say those are probably my biggest influences at a young age, uh, as far as, you know, where I am now. Yeah. Shout out to moms. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you, um, and you're that you're going to be that for somebody else. And I think that's why it's so important, like to have these sort of conversations, because these are positions that again, they're, they're not commonplace by any means, but you know, a young girl sees that, well, she can stay involved in sport by doing this um, and, and knowing your journey as well. I think it's, it's huge. Right. All right, we're going to change gears just a little bit. All right, we're going to do a segment called It's a Vibe. All right, so okay. I want you to think of a trend um, that you're okay. really into right now. So that could be clothes, shoes, something like a social media trend. Right, right. Know, that's a thing. But yeah, but yeah, something like that where you're really into it right now. Jordans, uh, okay. I'm kind of late to the shoe game, to be honest. I always was like happy with a pair of like Nike free runs that okay. did it for me. But lately, like the last probably year or so, I've started getting into the Jordans and some of the like Air Max type shoes. And so I, I would just say that's kind of the trend that I'm I'm on right now. Okay, sounds like a, an expensive trends um, <laughs> like a yes. hard to get trend but but i feel you the show is called major keys what is one major key that you would give to young girls those looking to get into the field that you're in or just to even motivate them um the first thing that comes to mind i always like to share this is that confidence comes from within right and it comes from doing the work um and if you're not quite sure what that means or what, what work looks like, you know, ask, reach out, especially this day and age with social media. Um, as you referenced, that's the space I occupy most of the time. And um, a DM on Twitter goes a long way. I know my DMs are open. I love it. I love it when young, especially females, yes, but anyone reach out for just general advice. Hey, how did you get there? Hey, this is what I do. I'm trying to break into the industry. You know, what are some things I can do? Um, so asking for help um, in the early stages, I mean, at any point, really, but especially in the early stages, I think is very important. Um, worst case, you don't get a response. I mean, maybe that kind of kind of bums you out for a little bit, then you move on, right? I mean, like I said, I always respond. So anyone who might want to reach out, like, please do. Uh, like I said, my DMs are open. But um, but no, I uh, that's why I say confidence comes from, from doing the work and, and let the work speak at the end of the day, winners recognize winners, workers recognize when, uh, workers. Uh, and, and that's very real, uh, especially as you kind of climb in your career and sports is very competitive as a player. Right. And then obviously like when you're on the other side, kind of in, in a career capacity um, and uh, it doesn't, it, workers recognize workers. You know, I think that's, that's kind of the key here um, for someone who's, searching for motivation, right? Or, or trying yeah. to get into the industry. Um, yeah. It's pretty, pretty clear from my vantage point. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining me. I think those who are watching oh, yeah. take a, a lot of information from not only your journey uh, and your work ethic and things like that, but um, just the idea of kind of even putting yourself out there and like you picked mm -hmm. up a camera last year and now you've got this viral video, all, all these <laughs> things. Um, I think it's just so inspiring to, to young people, um, people even, your age because i am your age so um yeah now i look forward yeah. to seeing 
your work continued uh, at Duke and hopefully I'll get back to Duke and I'll be able to, you know, yes. see you work Anytime. in person. Um, yeah. Get on the court and shoot a little because I didn't get to do that last time. Oh, yeah. And anytime I walk into a gym, that's kind of, you got to sure shoot. You, you just, you got to shoot there. So. And it, especially Cameron, you know, Cameron yeah. indoors, it's real because because I, I was a little like back three years ago, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to make this move. And when I came up here and walked into Cameron for the first time in my interview, I was like, okay, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm staying. I don't want to go back home now. Like, I'm ready to come and stay right. here right now because it's just, it is. So yes, we will definitely make that happen uh, post, post COVID, uh, you know, <laughs> yes. God willing, right? <laughs> yes, particularly post COVID, but yes, thank you so much. Again, thank you so much to Selena. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and do all the things, and I'll see you here next time on Major Keys. Keys, keys, keys. I got